Welcome back to part 2, module 3. So here is the example of research question um, for the first, uh, first type of experimental research, uh, control scientific experiment. If you're, use, if you're choosing this type, you need to look on the difference of the research question that you need to produce. Look at the first question here. The first question, can the bioactive pigments in the marine phytoplankton help in cardiovascular disease risk prevention? So you can see that one, what you need to make as a control and what do you need to set as the test of, the, of your experiment. So the first one, they say that bioactive pigments in the marine phytoplankton. So first you need to identify which pigments uh, in the phytoplankton that you need to uh, use to set up the experiment. And what kind of experiment that are you using uh, are you going to use to test the uh, means the, what the response to the disease? Okay. The second type of research is correlation studies. So uh, for researchers that choose to perform this kind of study, so actually they want to see as they will do the comparative analysis of two or more variables to determine existence of predictable relationships among them. So, uh, <clears throat> so that means in this type of study, you need to have a, a plot after, the, after you finish your study to show in your study the correlation plot. So either positive correlation or negative correlation or there is no correlation at all. So the um, example of research question for this type of research is um, i give you two examples here. The first one is, what is correlation or relationship between chlorophyll A and nutrients concentrations in the particular surface water? You see that? The, 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 uh, the question is correlation between chlorophyll A and nutrients in the surface water. So, this, this research wants to know what is the, the relationship between chlorophyll A and nutrients. Okay, the second question, is there any correlation between the abundance of microplastic on the beach and the microplastics in the seawater? So, you can see that they must have two variables that need to, uh, to compare. And then the analysis need to play with this kind of variable as well. And then need to plot to show the correlation. So, you can see the example of uh, positive, negative, and no correlations uh, like in this picture. If a positive correlation, so you, you will start from zero. And when you plot at the graph, you have y and x axis. As one variable increase, the other variable also increase. So we say uh, positive variable. For negative correlation, uh, the point lies close to a straight line which has a negative gradient means it start from high number and then going down so it shows that one variable increase as the other decrease so that is negative variable so for no correlation you it shows scattered data so you cannot plot it negative or uh, positive because it's, it has no connection between both variables Data collection analysis. This is um, common in our field. So researchers carry out experiment or uh, research uh, to look on the data survey, usually from field work via sampling or observation and report on current status uh, on abundance and distribution. So example of this kind of uh, uh, research question uh, is that like what is a spatial distribution of the microplastic in the Atlantic environment ecosystem in Sarawak. So, and the last type of research is computer modeling. So this one, um, the researchers must have a special skills uh, in predicting something that what will happen in future based on the current and past situation. Special skills in predicting the future using satellite data, using in-situ observations. So researchers 
still need to go to the field to collect a data into two uh, or uh, based on the previous data available in the literature uh, have a very good numerical model conditions know how to use uh, software computer and also good in mathematics um, usually it require very big data because to predict what happened in the future you need to have a lot of data um, if you have small data it will give small features that will unconstrain the result so it at the end it will produce error so I have an uh, example to show you that from the prediction is like this because they have a small data then we have a something that co uh, give you error so have a look at this picture so actually it's very recent I attended um, a talk uh, yesterday with a Chinese scientists uh, from China to explain on how um, the modeling have some problem it occurred uh, not according to what they have predicted so they look on what is the problem that thing happens so actually they have a very they're not small letter they consider it a big but actually to predict something uh, for nature to happen for example you want to predict tsunami and so on you need to have a very um, big data before you can do the prediction so usually this kind of uh, uh, research focus on uh, climate change, uh, physical oceanography, and uh, so on. So, example, uh, the question of uh, for computer modeling, you can say that how the deep water circulation influence the stable water masses and the future climate trend. You can see the point there to predict the future climate trend. Okay, so prediction, predicting the future is how strong are the storm wave energy at near shore that will introduce the negative bias on the shore face. Uh, so very huge question here. So you know that how strong means you need to study the energy uh, of the wave near shore and then that can create negative impact to the shore face. This is interesting yesterday also in the talk with UMT. So they said that um, the the coastal area of Kuala Nerus and Mangawang Teliput at Kuala Terengganu there are in, in serious erosion every year due to the strong wave. So that, that's why it's very important to predict what will happen in the next 10 years to that coastal area. Is it all the villages along that uh, coastal will be sink in the next 10 years and what action that they need to do? So that means you will solve the problem. You need to suggest to the, um, to the policy maker or to the authorities on what to do next. Now you need to think about your FYP title and type of research that you are going to do next semester. Please think about it. Choose one topic.